so much for joining us online today. We're looking forward to a great time in God's word. Now, before we dismiss the kids, I just wanted to say a couple things. First of all, I want to say uh, happy holiday weekend. So there was a lot going on this week. First of all, I want to say uh, since today it's Father's Day, happy Father's Day uh, to the dads in the room uh, and to those of, to the dads watching online. And uh, yesterday I was out with Julianne and we were looking for some stuff for my grill. And I was looking at her and just remembering whenever I became a dad. Uh, so I'm thankful for, for my dad, for my father, and uh, for the dads out there. Also, I want to say uh, happy Juneteenth. That was this weekend. And, uh, and on June, uh, June 19th, 1865... Uh, the news of the Emancipation Proclamation reached Galveston, Texas, and all slaves were made free on June 19th, 1865. And that's a reason to celebrate. And as believers, we also have a reason to celebrate that. I was just, I was thinking about it and getting excited because on that day, news reached that everyone was free, that they were made free. And as believers, we celebrate that every single Sunday, we celebrate that Jesus has made us free. And I'm so thankful for that. And before, right before we dismiss the kids, I also want to say, one more thank you. And I want to say thank you to Tim. Tim is in the back. Uh, Tim, if you just wave at everybody. Tim, uh, God called us to start this church on Easter Sunday, and we started online due to the coronavirus. And Tim, uh, Tim's really the one who's made that happen, who's made that an enjoyable experience. So Tim, thank you so much for all of your work and the work that you're even doing today to make this for everyone, a great experience. Well, let's go ahead and take our bi kids. You can go ahead and be dismissed. I almost forgot. Kids, you can be dismissed with Miss Sarah to your class. Y'all are going to have a great time today, a great time today. And let's go ahead and take our Bibles and turn to the Gospel of Mark. Let's turn to Mark chapter number eight, and we are starting a brand new sermon series today uh, in Mark chapter number eight. And we are talking about who Jesus is. So we're starting a new sermon series today called Fake Jesus. Now, let me ask you, how many of you, and if you're online watching, then let us know in the comments. And I guess if you're on Facebook, uh, then you're, you know, just the fact that you're on Facebook lets us all know. But if you're on Instagram, make fun of all the people that still have Facebook. How many of you still have Facebook? How many of you still have Facebook? I, I, I admit I'm an old person that still has Facebook. And uh, those of you who are on Instagram watching or YouTube watching that don't have Facebook, you can make fun of everybody else if you want to. Uh, so, but on Facebook, one of my favorite things whenever it doesn't make me mad is, is uh, all the articles that get passed around and shared around, all those news articles that get shared around. And here's, here's what is funny to me. Here's what's humorous to me, what I like about it. I love it whenever a fake uh, article gets shared and it's obviously fake. For example, one, an article, a news site that I like is called the Babylon Bee. It's a satirical website. Uh, they make fun of real world events. And I love whenever they get sh that gets shared around and then people aren't paying attention uh, to the fact that it's fake and it's obviously fake and it's satirical in nature. And then people start commenting based on the headlines, believing that it's true. So for example, I saw a recent Babylon Bee article where it says this. So this week, the Supreme Court has had, has had a lot of action this week. They've, uh, they've, made a lot of, they've made a lot of decisions this week, and uh, Donald Trump hasn't liked that. President Trump hasn't liked it. So there was this Babylon Bee article that said, President Trump has decided to nominate himself to the Supreme Court. Now, it was obviously not true. It was fake. But I love the comments that show up that are uh, all the people that are saying that read it like it's true. And all they did was read the, read the headline. They don't read who it's from or where it's from. And it's fake. But all the people that act like it's real. And I just think that that's, to me, that's really humorous. I think that that's really funny. But what's sad is that as uh, whenever it comes to our relationship with Jesus, a lot of times we get into the same exact boat. We get into a position where we believe things about Jesus, uh, we think things about Jesus, and it could be based on a lot of different things. It could be based on our experiences where we maybe have a bad experience where uh, we think, hey, maybe Jesus doesn't love me because I had a certain bad experience. Or maybe it's something that we heard in church, whether it was maybe uh, something in the Bible that was taken out of context. And uh, it has nothing to do with what the Bible actually actually says what God actually says about himself, but we develop a false view of Jesus based on something that we've seen, something that we've heard, something that we've experienced. 
And in Mark chapter 8, and really for the next several weeks, what we're going to be seeing is we're going to be seeing the real biblical Jesus. You see, uh, in Mark chapter 8, Jesus is starting to make his way to the cross. He's starting to make his way to Calvary for you and for me. And as he's getting to Calvary, as he's making his way to Calvary, he's really starting to focus on his purpose. And this question is going to keep on reoccurring, and it's this, who is Jesus? And as we look for the next several weeks at who Jesus is, it is going to dispel all of the fake ideas of Jesus, all the false views of Jesus. In fact, Jesus even said to watch out for false Christ, people who you'd think, hey, this has got to be Jesus, but it's really not the biblical Jesus. So as we continue in Mark chapter 8, we're going to start our series, uh, part one of fake Jesus. And today we're going to talk about genie Jesus, genie Jesus. And uh, I'm really excited about what we're going to learn today and talk about today. So Mark chapter eight, and we're going to begin reading in verse number 11. And the Bible says, and the Pharisees came forth and began to question him. Uh, and the Pharisees came forth and began to question with him, seeking of him a sign from heaven, tempting him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and saith, Why does this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall be no sign be given unto this generation. And he left them and entering into the ship again departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. And when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, Why reason ye, because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand? Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes see not, and having ears hear ye not, and do ye not remember? When I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? They said unto him, Twelve. And when the seven among four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, seven. And he said unto them, how is it that ye do not understand? Today we're going to be talking about Genie Jesus in our first, in our part one of fake, in our fake Jesus series. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your goodness to us. And Lord, I thank you for this opportunity that we have to worship all together. Uh, and Lord, we've, I've, I've missed this opportunity. And Lord, I thank you for everyone who's here today. Thank you for those who are watching online. Lord, I pray that you bless them and I pray that you'd help them today. And for everyone who watches both today and now and here in this moment and who the, those who watch down the road, Lord, I pray that you give them exactly what they need when they need it. Thank you for your word. I pray that you bless this time that we have together. In Jesus' name, amen. One of the movies that my, that my girls love is the movie Aladdin. Uh, so they really like the new Aladdin. And in fact, I'm going to come down here and get one of their favorite parts about the movie. But they love the movie Aladdin, and that really marked for us uh, Adriana's pregnancy with Witten. Uh, because we started watching it early in, our, in her pregnancy with Witten, and we were watching, and she got really sick one day because she couldn't eat ground beef. And she had hot dogs on that day. So uh, we had to pause the movie every 30 minutes or every 15 minutes. Uh, and it was, it was a mess. Uh, so, but... Aladdin has been stuck in our minds and hearts ever since then. But the girls love Aladdin. Uh, they love the genie. And, uh, you know, the premise of the whole movie, just in case you haven't seen it, is uh, there's this man who stumbles across a magic lamp. And when he stumbles across the magic lamp, he rubs the lamp, and a genie comes out, and the genie gives him three wishes. One of your wishes can't be to wish for more wishes. I would have tried that. Uh, so, but you can't wish for more wishes. So he rubs the lamp, and out pops the genie, and the genie does whatever Aladdin wants uh, in the movie. And as I think about that, and I think about that movie and that idea, there are a lot of people that have that kind of idea, that kind of view of Jesus. They have a view of Jesus where, hey, if I just, uh, if I just pray, uh, then Jesus will do for me whatever I want. Uh, if I come to church, then surely that's got to give me, like, that's got to give me some, like, some good. Uh, that's got to give me some brownie points with God where God will just, uh, hey, he's got to give me uh, exactly what I want if I just do this certain thing for him. And, and as we start this series, I think that we're going we're gonna to find this false view of Jesus and lots of false views of Jesus that are really going to convict our hearts. It's convicted mine. Uh, this morning as I was driving and praying and thinking about this message, I was convicted. Jesus, I'm guilty of looking at you as my genie in a bottle. 
uh, the one who's just supposed to do for me whatever I want. And what we're going to see is that Jesus corrects that view, that false view in our study today. In Mark chapter 8, Jesus has just gotten back from uh, a Gentile region. He's been ministering to the Gentiles. And uh, aren't you thankful? And to me, it's pretty amazing uh, just how, how good God is and how good his word is. Whenever everything is on our minds nationally, everything that's going on with uh, racism and racial reconciliation, we saw that Jesus loves every ethnicity. And we saw him reaching out to people who were a different ethnicity than him. And I'm thankful for that example that we see in scripture. I'm thankful for that. And Jesus gets back to Israel now after a vacation. And when he gets back from his time in uh, the Gentile region in Tyre and Sidon, and in Decapolis, he gets back and there's a problem waiting for him. Now, how many of you, you love it? It happens to you. I know it happens to me whenever you come back from vacation and it just seems like there's some big problem waiting for you when you get back. Does that, does that only happen to me or does that happen to you too? Uh, let us know in the comments. It seems like if I go away on a trip, whenever I come back, there's going to be some problem. There's going to be some issue out there somewhere. And Jesus gets back from this Gentile region where he's been. He's back in Israel and there's a problem waiting for him. And we see that problem in verse number 11. It says, And the Pharisees, whenever he comes back, the Pharisees came forth and began to question him, seeking of him a sign from heaven, tempting him. Now, we need to understand that whenever Jesus gets back, these Pharisees, they come, they approach him, and they have a question for him. Now, I do want to pause and say that questions can be a really good thing. Questions are, questions are great whenever it comes from, from honest hearts, from seeking hearts, from, uh, even if it's skeptical, just from an honest heart. And by the way, I just want to say this here at New Life. I hope that it's a place where we can ask questions and get our questions answered. Uh, if you have questions about your faith, no matter how big it may seem or no matter how small it may seem, I hope that you'll come and that you'll, you'll talk to us. And by the way, we don't have all the answers. Uh, and sometimes you're going to come and you're going to ask questions that I'm going to say, or uh, whoever you talk to is going to say, hey, you know what? I don't have it all figured out either, but let's wrestle with it together. But here these Pharisees, they come with questions, and it's not the questions of an honest skeptic or, or an honest seeker. It's the question of somebody trying to cause trouble. Uh, now, I don't know about you. Maybe, maybe you were this kid in school, uh, but you know that kid in school that would ask questions of the teacher, but it wasn't because they didn't know the answer. It was because they just wanted to cause trouble. It's just because they wanted to make the teacher mad. Uh, some of you are looking around like, yeah, that was me. Uh, so, but, you know, uh, that's what the Pharisees are doing here. They come to him, tempting him, trying to cause trouble with him. And they're seeking for, it says that they're seeking from him a sign from heaven, tempting him. So here's what they're saying. They're saying, hey, Jesus, you've, you've done a lot of little miracles so far. Now we want you to do a big one. We want you to do one that we want. We want you to do a sign from heaven. Now, uh, Jesus has done some miracles so far that we have studied together, and I wouldn't classify them as, as small. Uh, think about it. Jesus has calmed the winds and the waves. Jesus has casted out demons. Jesus has raised uh, the dead back to life. He's healed the sick. Those are, those are big miracles. Those aren't small miracles. But the Pharisees are saying, Jesus, you've done, you've done some little stuff. Now we want you to do something for us that we want, that we like. And that teaches us the first lesson today about a genie view of Jesus. You see, whenever I have a genie view of Jesus, I have the wrong Lord. Whenever I have a genie view of Jesus, whenever I expect Jesus to just be uh, my servant that does whatever I want, I have the wrong Lord. And the Pharisees are saying, hey, we want you to do this sign that we expect you to do. You see, the Pharisees had this theory. They had this belief that, that demons could perform miracles on earth. They believed that demons could perform miracles on earth, but they couldn't perform miracles of heaven. Uh, they couldn't perform heavenly miracles. So, for example, in 1 Kings, whenever Elijah the prophet went up against the false prophets of Baal, uh, Elijah called down fire from heaven, and Baal couldn't do that. So God called down fire. Elijah called down fire from heaven, and God sent the fire down from heaven. So that was a, that was a heavenly miracle that only God could do. And that's what the Pharisees were expecting. They were saying, hey, you need to perform some miracle of nature that, that demons can't do to prove to us that you really are the Christ, that you really are the Messiah. Now, did they believe that he wasn't the Messiah? Well, I don't think so. In John chapter 3, Nicodemus, a Pharisee, comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, uh, we know that you are a teacher come from God. He said, we Pharisees know who you are. We know that you've come from God. But the Pharisees are just wanting Jesus to be the Messiah that they were expecting. 
You see the Pharisees here, and Jesus then talks about Herod. These groups of people, they were expecting the Messiah to look a certain way. They were looking for the Messiah to be a certain way. The Pharisees were looking for a Messiah who would come and would get rid of the Roman oppressors who were in their life and and set up the Pharisees to to rule everything uh, religiously. That's what they were expecting. So they said, hey, Jesus, we want you to perform a miracle that's going to establish our clout. We want you to perform a miracle for us. We want you to perform a miracle for us that, that, that makes us right. That's what they're saying. And my friend, whenever we have that kind of view of Jesus, that was their view of Jesus. Jesus, you be the Messiah that we want you to be because if you're not, we don't really want you. And a lot of times I've been guilty in my life where I've looked to God and I've said, hey, God, uh, I'll make this deal with you. If you'll do this thing for me, then I'll do something for you. As a kid, I pray that all the time. Lord, if you help me find my lost toy, I'll serve you all of my life. But you know, a lot of times we do the same thing. God, if you give me the job that I want, I'll, I'll go to church. God, if, if, you'll, if, you'll, if you'll give me some more money that I need, then God, I'll do this thing for you. And whenever we do that, we're not making Jesus our Lord. We're making ourselves our Lord. And that's what the Pharisees were doing. They were making themselves their Lord. They said, Jesus, we want you to be here to serve us. And a lot of times I've been guilty. I've been too guilty of looking at Jesus and saying, Jesus, I want you to just do for me whatever I want. And in so doing, I, I don't make... Jesus the Lord, I make myself the Lord. I make him here to serve me instead of me being here to love and to serve him. And my friend, that doesn't work. That doesn't work in Christianity. That doesn't work in your relationship with Christ. And that doesn't work uh, at home. It doesn't work uh, at work. Uh, Whenever I go home and I live with with my family and I make it all about myself, whenever I try to serve myself, uh, relationships don't look that great in my house. Uh, Whenever I go to work, Whenever I go to work and I make everything about me, whenever I make the whole world revolve around me, then I don't have great relationships at work. I remember, and I'm sure you've had this too, where you've had a a boss or a supervisor who they just, everything was about how they could look good, Uh, how how you could make the boss look good. How many of you like working for a boss like that? So I know know that I, I didn't. I know that I I don't like working for bosses like that where it's all about making self look good. And the same thing is true in our lives. Whenever we live our lives where the world revolves around us, where everything revolves around us, we make ourselves the Lord and that's unhealthy. So we see whenever I, when I have a genie view of Jesus, I have the wrong Lord. The second thing that we see in our passage today is whenever whenever I have a genie view of Jesus, I have a temporal focus. I have a temporal focus. So Jesus... He says, uh, they say, hey, perform a miracle for us from heaven. And in verse 13, it says, and he left them. Now, I still, I find the love of Jesus interesting and marvelous. And uh, it's amazing, the love of Jesus. Because in Matthew, Jesus says this. uh, He says, hey, I'm not going to perform this miracle for you. Here, whenever it says, verily I say unto you that no sign from heaven will be given. uh, Basically, he's saying, hey, there's no stinking way I'm doing that for you. I'm not giving you just another sign. I've already given you lots of signs. But then in Matthew, he says this, hey, I will give you one more sign, and it's this. Uh, He says in Matthew, it's the sign of Jonah. It's the sign of Jonah that like Jonah went down in the belly of the whale for three days, the Son of Man will die and be be dead and buried for three days and then rise again. I find that really interesting. Jesus says, hey, there's one thing I'm gonna do for you. There's one thing I'm going to do for you. I'm going to die on the cross for you. I'm going to be buried for you. I'm going to rise again for you. And my friend, that's what Jesus has done for us. And a lot of times we look at these Pharisees and think that, man, Jesus must have hated them. But even in Matthew, even in this moment where they're breaking his heart, it says that he sighed when he heard their questions and their heart behind it. He says, hey, I will give you one sign. I will die for you and I will rise again for you. That's why on the cross he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He still loved them and he still loved you and he still loved me. Those of us who are, who are hypocrites, those of us who are Pharisees, God still loves even them. And he says, hey, I'm going to give you one sign. I'm going to die and I'm going to rise again. But then he leaves. He says, I'm not doing this sign that you want. I'm going to, I'm, it's, I need to, I'm the Lord, not you. That's what Jesus is saying. So then they leave, they get into a ship and it says in verse number 14, look with me. It says, now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. So they get in the boat, they're taken off, and they realize something. Hey, we've gone on a road trip, and we forgot to pack up. We forgot to pack lunch. 
Uh, and now that's a big part of their conversation. They, there's been this big disagreement. There's been this big, uh, really kind of battle between Jesus and the Pharisees and the disciples get in a boat and all they can think about is lunch. Uh, now, uh, it's easy to be hard on the disciples. I've listened to some people uh, even this week and their take on the passage. And uh, some people said, man, these disciples were really stupid. These disciples were really dense. These disciples missed everything. They were thinking about lunch. But I can't be too hard on them because how many times have we sat in church? How many times have I sat in church where all I can do, there's deep, there's deep truths. There's, there's amazing things. There, the gospel's being preached. And all I can think about is, man, I can't wait to get out of here so I can have my burgers, uh, so I can have water burger afterwards so I can have my sweet and spicy bacon burger where there's these there's all of this going on and all I can think about is lunch and that's where the disciples are at the disciples are thinking about lunch they forgot bread and then in verse number 15 it says that he charged them take heed beware watch out be careful beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod so he's saying hey guys watch out he's using an object lesson hey watch out you're talking about bread. Watch out for the leaven. Now, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time in scripture, leaven is used as in a negative context. Uh, yeast that's put, in, that's put in dough to make the dough rise. You just put a little bit in and it, it affects the whole, uh, all of the dough. And he's saying, hey, watch out because there's leaven in the Pharisees. This, this idea of how they, approached, uh, how they approach me, Jesus is saying. This idea of how they approach Jesus, there's leaven in that. And, and just be careful because it's easy for that to get in you. It's easy for that old life to, to stick around and get in you. And uh, he's saying, watch out for that. And then it says in verse number 16, it says, and they reason among themselves saying, it is because we have no bread. And it's like, man, Jesus is, here's the idea. They're saying, man, Jesus is ticked at us because we didn't bring lunch. You say, you stinking Pharisees, you didn't bring me a sandwich. And then Jesus immediately corrects them in verse 17. And, or, uh, he says in verse number 17, Why reason ye because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand. Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes see ye not, and having ears hear ye not, and do ye not remember? When I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? They say unto him, twelve. And when the seven among four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, seven. They're saying, hey, Jesus has just ticked at us. Jesus has ticked at us for not bringing him lunch. And Jesus is saying, hey, listen, I'm way bigger than that. I'm way bigger than that. You need to stop thinking, just thinking about yourselves and stop thinking about right here and right now. You're missing the point. It's like whenever you're driving, you don't look right in front of the hood of your car or else you're going to be swaying all over the place. You look kind of out in the distance a little bit. Uh, I, like, I like mowing grass. I like hopping on the mower and just plugging in some headphones. And uh, The key to keeping straight lines whenever you're mowing is you have to have a fixed point out in the distance that you're looking towards. Whenever your focus is too short-sighted, you, you, you mess everything up. And Jesus is saying, hey, disciples, hey, it's not about right here. It's not about right now. It's not about physical bread. Do you not remember? Hey, I gave, I just fed 5,000. We talked about that a few weeks ago. And then, and then in Mark chapter 8, the same exact chapter, it was just days before where we saw that Jesus fed 4,000 people with just a couple of loaves of bread. Jesus is saying, hey, I don't sweat small stuff. I don't sweat small stuff, but whenever we have a genie view of Jesus, where Jesus is just here to do for me what I want, to look at, to meet all of my needs that are right here, right now, and that's all that I care about, what I'm doing is I'm keeping, I have a short-sighted view instead of trusting what he's doing in the long term. When I have a genie view of Jesus, I have a temporal focus. And then finally, we see in, the, in our text, when I have a genie view of Jesus, I have anemic understanding. I have a weak understanding. You see, they they're get caught up thinking Jesus is rebuking them about, about bread. And he's saying, hey, listen, I, I, you need to understand something. The Pharisees, they just want, they want religious rule. They want me to set them up for religious power. You need to watch out for the Herodians. The Herodians uh, were the political system of the day that wanted Jesus, that wanted the Messiah to get rid of the Romans so that they could have uh, political authority. In Matthew, he says, Be watch, watch out for the leaven of the Sadducees. 
They just didn't believe God at all. They didn't believe his word at all. They didn't take his word seriously. And here we see Jesus is saying, hey, listen, you need to understand that this isn't about something small. This isn't about something temporal. You need to watch out because if you have that leaven of the Pharisees and the Herodians, you're going to have the wrong view of me, of who Jesus is. That's what he's saying here. Whenever I have a genie view of Jesus, whenever I just think, hey, Jesus is just here to be whatever I want, then we have an anemic, we have a weak understanding of Jesus, of who Jesus is. If Jesus just cared about bread, then he wouldn't be making his way to the cross. And my friend, for you and for me, Jesus had an eternal plan that all, went all the way back to eternity past. Whenever mankind sinned in the garden, when mankind rejected God in the Garden of Eden, God had a plan that he already had set in motion uh, to come to rescue you and to rescue me from my sins. And Jesus is saying, hey, I have an eternal mindset. I'm not just here for this moment. I'm thinking in terms of eternity. So Jesus gave himself. Jesus sacrificed himself for you and for me. And my friend, we need to understand first and foremost that Jesus isn't just uh, my genie in a bottle. Jesus isn't just Hey, he's my nice little, uh, he's my nice little necklace that I place around my neck to give me good luck today. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the King of Kings. Who am I that the highest King would welcome me? That's who he is. He's our King. So my friend, I would just like to ask you today, how do you view Jesus? How do you view Jesus? Because if you just look at Jesus as, hey, he's here to do for me what I want today, then it's just, it's just a weak view where we miss out on the splendor of who he really is. Because who he is is so much greater, so much more amazing. That's who Jesus is. My friend, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, if you've just looked at, if you've just looked at church as, hey, I, I, just, I go to church so I can have some good luck. If I go to church so things can work out for, well for me during the week. But you've never recognized that Jesus is, is the son of God who lived and died and gave himself as a sacrifice to pay for your sins and for mine, then I'd like to invite you to receive him today. If you'd like to know more about how you can trust Jesus as your savior, please reach out to us and direct message or in the comments. Please come talk to us. We'd love to show you how you can know Jesus as your personal savior. As we close this morning, I just want to say this, that in our lives, whenever we, just, whenever we get self-focused, we just miss out on a whole lot. We miss out on a whole lot. Whenever I, um, I've always been, I think, I think most of you probably know this, I've always been like a pretty big uh, video game player. I like playing my Madden. I like playing my, my NBA 2K. I always liked that. Well, whenever I was a teenager one time, my grandma came to visit, and it was a surprise trip to my uncle. He was a pilot, and he was flying into where we lived, and my grandma hopped a plane, and she came, and she surprised us. Well, for the three or four days that she was with us, I uh, pretty much all I did was I just played my video games. So it was the weekend. That's kind of what I, uh, that was some of the fun things that I did on the weekend was I just played games. And that's pretty much all I did when my grandma came to visit. Well, then I thought that she was going to be staying longer, but I didn't realize that she was just leaving on that Monday morning. So she gets ready and she leaves. And I realized that I just completely missed out on spending time with my grandma, who everybody, everybody loves grandma. Uh, I completely missed out because for a weekend, I was just focused on myself. Friends, whenever we focus on ourselves, whenever we just live our lives for ourselves, we, we just miss out. We miss out on seeing who Jesus really is. He's our savior and he's our king. He's our Lord. Let's not miss out on that this week. Let's go ahead and pray together. And we'll close. Father, we love you. Thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for uh, your amazing grace. Thank you that even here in this moment, you are, you are looking to the cross. Even when the Pharisees are uh, rejecting you, even when the Pharisees are attacking you, you're still uh, showing your love by saying, I'm going to die, and three days later, I'm going to rise again. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us this week to just have our eyes focused on you, uh, to see you for who you really are, and not be focused on just on ourselves, on right here, right now, but to trust you and what you're doing because we love you and because we know you. May we all grow to love you more in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you so much for uh, being here today and worshiping with us today. So it's an amazing time. We're going to start meeting uh, every single week at 1030, and I'm so excited about that. Also, some things that I'm really excited about, too, is Thursday nights at 630. Uh, we have here at New Life, we want to love Jesus, and we want to love like Jesus. We want to do that together. Uh, so ways that we do that is we gather here on Sunday mornings at 1030 on Thursday nights at 630. We have more of a round, uh, kind of a round table discussion going through the Word of God. So Thursday nights at 630, we'd love for you to be a part of that. Thank you so much. Uh, have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I'm so looking forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.